morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It's Rebecca Overson here in the Art of Building a Successful Massage Practice. And I am so excited to introduce you to one of my incredible graduates of my eight-week mentorship program. Katie is in Philadelphia, well, just outside of Philadelphia, and um, started her own practice right after massage school, and it wasn't going very well as planned. Um, she reached out for help and we turned things around in just a matter of eight weeks. She went from 45 to 90 clients and was turning a profit as well as repaying the investment working with me. So super excited to share uh, Katie with you today and have her tell her story of, of, you know, what, how did she do that? What kind of results? What did she, what did she do in order to make those changes? You know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people feel like they have to struggle forever, and that's just not true. The camera, uh, and we're just gonna jump right in. Hi, Hello. Mama. How are you? Good to see you. Yes. Did we get your audio fixed? Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, so tell us who you are and what your niche is and where you practice and how oh long. Oh my God! You I just about. got booked again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> By the way, yep. Katie's had three bookings in the 15 minutes that we've been talking before this interview. Bizarre. You guys. Three. Three bookings. Just flying okay. in. Okay. Um, I'm in so. outside of Philadelphia in the Ardmore mainline area. I have been in business since March of 2018. I actually graduated in February 2018 from massage school. Uh, well, I jumped right in. Jumped I've owned right my in. own business before. I was an interior designer for 20 years and had my own business in that for uh, about seven years, but never really that successful. But I, at least I had some background of owning my own business. Um, I'm a yoga instructor. I was doing Thai massage before that, and I went to massage school, fell in love with the practice, um, and knew immediately I wanted to work for myself. And I did. I was actually going to partner with two other people to share a space. They bailed. Um, so I was stuck with a space all by myself. Uh, March 17th was my very first uh, client. And it took a couple weeks to take off, but it started to take off. I did okay because I had a yoga community. Um, did okay in the springtime, did okay in the summer. Um, and then it started to plummet. And then I got nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And we're going to hear that. We're going to hear the happy, you know, resolution of those challenges, which I think is really important. So tell me, what were you doing? Um, what were you doing before you worked with me just to, to get clients? How did you find the clients when you started? Uh, as I said, I was a yoga instructor at a yoga studio right around the corner that I'd been practicing and teaching um, on and off for a couple of years. So some of it was through that. Um, and I'd already been doing some Thai massage and had done a little bit on my own, but I was working uh, for a massage and yoga studio. Uh, so it just sort of happened. I kind of spoke about it on Facebook and Instagram and kind of like shared my story of becoming a massage therapist. And I think that had gravitated um, some mm. people to me, but I hadn't quite honed my niche, which I don't think I told you what my niche was just yet. So I think people were kind of hesitant. A lot of people don't know about massage. They just think it's all deep tissue, sports massage, or it's all the fluffy relaxation spa stuff. Um, yeah. So once I kind of figured out, I got booked again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Katie's had four bookings in the last 27 minutes. <laughs> bizarre. This is so bizarre. Um, I know it's great. It's not. It's great. I mean, but come on, it's not. It bizarre. is good. It's amazing. It's exactly how. And it's because of you. Here, that's why right? this is happening. Um, but I think what I was figuring out was honing my niche well. and figuring out what I really loved about massage and what I wanted to do about my business because it wasn't just massage. And I like yeah. to help people with anxiety yeah. and anxiety disorders and um, helping people de-stress. So a little bit more on the relaxation element, um, somatics mm -hmm. and letting emotional uh, problems and trauma release. Uh, yeah. But it's specific, specific to anxiety, anxiety because of niche. the physical manifestations of what happens when people live through anxiety. That's great. That's great. So you found me in October. 
Thank I you found, yeah, because in August, right? everything plummeted. I barely made my rent. And there was like, everything will pick back up in September mm -hmm. once kids are back at school. And it didn't. And I was starting to panic. And I think I'd already joined this group. I was doing a lot of trying to figure out marketing. And I joined a couple different massage groups, a couple different Facebook groups, um, some just professionals and some marketing. And I started watching your live Q&As. And it just sort of spoke to me about mm. basically you can do this. You can do a solo practice. You don't have to build a huge thing, um, which is what I really like. I like keeping things kind of small. Um, and then mm. I don't even remember exactly how. I think it was in one of your Q&As you were doing towards the end, uh, saying something about, you know, doing something with your program. And I went, I kind of, I think I need to do this because my, my numbers weren't yeah. increasing back in September. And then it got to be October, and yeah. so I did. That's a... <laughs> by the way, I want to say that happens to a lot of people. And if you guys are watching, by the way, if you guys are watching with us live or even the replay and have questions for Katie or for me, just go ahead and put them in the comments. We will circle around to you, okay? But I'm really glad that you said that because this happens. And it really is like the beginner's luck. It's, it's um, you know, a lot of people that I've talked to start a practice and they're really gung ho and there's all of that new energy going into it and it's news and it's exciting. And maybe they have a community they can draw from initially mm -hmm. like your yoga community or maybe friends and family are super, super supportive at first. And, and so you have the illusion of uh, like, oh, it's working, it's working. It's working at a certain level, but right. it's not working long term, right? And so I see that a lot for people about four or five months into their practice, their new practice, it tanks because there's a few things mm -hmm. that they're missing, right? So, okay, so let's jump forward here. What was the main, um, so we mm -hmm. worked together for yep. eight weeks in my program. What was the, tell us about the results that you got in eight weeks, because I think you guys are going to be so surprised by this. I swear people don't believe me. They don't believe me when I say, oh yeah, I'm, some of my students get like 40 new clients in a, in a month or 50 new clients or, or double, triple, quadruple, or increase their sales by 30%. I mean, these breakthrough results that keep going. Okay, so I want them to hear it from you. So tell us what results you got out of the, the program in terms okay. of your measures, your metrics. And, I think and, I started like mid-October. Okay. I paid for the program in full up front. Um, and mm -hmm. no, And it wasn't cheap. cheap, by the way. I ha I, luckily, I had it. I had it in the bank. Max the credit um, I had card. It, but I was like, ooh, that's a big chunk of change. Um, so this better work, and I need to basically mm -hmm. work my butt off. And yep. so I want – By the way, yes. that's one of you my work hard. favorites, right? You guys, cheap doesn't, yep. cheap doesn't work. we got to get you sufficiently motivated. So anyway, I think – I want to say it was in the first four weeks, I made that money back in profit. I, I started – Wow. Not, gross. not gross, not gross revenue, you guys. Because, and you, the way the program works is you work on a weekly basis on the strategies that you teach and you implement them instead of everything kind of coming at you at once. You do certain things to kind of figure out what um, you want to do and you start implementing them and you start to see the changes, especially if you put the time in. Um, so I did because I had the time because I wasn't as busy and then it took off. I mean, I really have been busy ever since. It really, I slowed down just a mm. teeny bit in the summertime um, this past summer, but not, I think I was triple or quadruple what I was last August where I said I barely made my rent. I, and that was a slow month. So, mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you said here, so you said here, you gain, you've been gaining mm -hmm. new clients each month. You said an average of eight new clients a month, which is good and consistent. You got seven new clients just right away during the program. And then you said this year I tripled the sales and made a decent profit. And it sounds like even though August was slow, you weren't really mm -hmm. or slower. No, no, because out, right? you, the way your program works is you kind of have to set a foundation and you have to learn how to get over your fears and figure out what your fears are. And and especially with what I do and I study anxiety because um, I don't just do massage and I don't just do yoga. I do a couple other things for my business, but I use what you taught me for every aspect I do is you kind of have to look at why are you afraid? What is triggering you and go hone in on that instead mm -hmm. of panicking 
and uh, doing something that you'll later regret, whether it's like a huge sale or um, something where you're going to, yeah, just desperation which is what my instead of past strategy. behavior yeah. was like, was just, I just want the money now. I want the clients now instead of cultivating and planting the seeds yeah. and letting it grow. And then it starts growing and then you're like, yeah. okay, I, but you also give us the strategy of what happens <laughs> when you grow. Um, so I've been right. very, very grateful for that. And I've been able to implement it as I've expanded my business into the sort of wellness package. Um, it's really, really, it's really been well worth it. So awesome. Isn't that exciting, you guys? I want, and I love sharing this with you because, first of all, I want you to hear it from them, not from me, right? I want you to hear it from these real actual people with real fears and real problems just like you to impress upon your minds that that kind of success is possible. She's tripled her revenue in a year, which is pretty freaking cool. Tell me, what was the real motivating factor for you to solve those problems besides mm -hmm. obviously you want to make money and have your business grow? Like what, what was the real underlying? I don't know if anybody there? can truly relate. Actually, I think a lot of people can relate to this, but maybe not admit it uh, publicly, but I've been taking care of my entire life financially from my parents. I met my, well now ex-husband, uh, right after college and was always supported by them. And even though I always had jobs, there was no way I could ever have supported myself. So I left my marriage at the age of 44 and we, we kept a joint checking account. So I still was very reliant on him. And then I realized it, this needs to change. And like at age 47, I realized I want to take care of myself. And once I opened up my business, I'm, like, I'm going to do this. And then that's when things tanked five months later. And I'm like, shit, sorry. Um, um, <laughs> I am not going to be able to do this. And I feel <laughs> like my entire life, I've tried something and failed, tried something and failed, tried something and failed. And I really was sick and tired of that. And I needed to be able mm. to support myself. Um, Cause I'm a single mom and I don't want to be reliant on another human being to pay my bills. I want to work for myself and pay everything myself and put money aside yeah. for my retirement and vacations and self care. And that when August came and everything plummeted, I was like, it's not going to happen for me. And that was my motivating factor big time. Yeah. Like to not have another failure or to fail. It's Cause I also knew I was, I'm you. good at right. massage. I'm it's, it's a calling. Yeah. Um, I like helping people. And I was like, I don't want to give that up. This is that other aspect of the motivation is this is what I would think I was born to do. I want to do it right. I don't want to get overworked. Uh -huh. I don't want to have to work for somebody else and get, have problems with my wrists and elbows and take on clients that aren't of my niche. I want it. I want to be able to control my own destiny. Yeah. Didn't you, and maybe, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but didn't you have some cool stuff go on during the program or shortly thereafter where you got like some really cool, like celebrity, um, I, actually, stuff? which I don't was know. so I weird. Mean, I, <laughs> five weeks into opening my business, I actually did have, um, um, a musician come to me. Who's, I guess a fairly big name. Um, and they actually kind of got me through the summer, but they're not here all the time and they mm -hmm. left. Um, but I now have yeah. a person, a TV personality coming to me. Um, and it got out because I have several models also that come to me. Um, I have a lot of creative people. I think I'll put it that way. I have a lot of creative people because it's an industry. And I think you're familiar with this with you and your family history of mm -hmm. musicians is mm -hmm. creative people live in a higher level of stress and anxiety because of their nervous system and the way they um, process information. But that's also what makes them more creative. And, um, so mm -hmm. yeah, over the course of the, the, my first year in business, I did have a lot of creative people start coming to me, but yeah, I do have a kind of a big name. Yeah. Yeah. I read, I just remember you being like so excited because once you had really declared mm -hmm. that niche for yourself of, of anxiety and stress, and then it was like, it just took on a whole new meaning of how you can be the, the ace in the pocket mm -hmm. for a lot of these people that are otherwise can't can't mm -hmm. let their guard down you know famous people public people entertainers a lot of those people struggle with anxiety and you wouldn't know it because right. they can't let it show 
you know, and I just remember us having that, you sharing something about that, that I, you were like, Uh it was so fulfilling to like be this safe place for this person um, to be able to find the support and the nurturing and they're still, that they needed. They're still coming to me, and now level. they're allowing me to work on them, even on a deeper scale. I do craniosacral now, and which is not a massage. Mm. It's it's something completely different, but it still helps with anxiety. Right. And they've now trusted me enough to allow them to to go that route. Same thing with the the person in the in the TV uh, realm. Uh, in fact, it's so funny when I've had people who are um, famous or notoriety they almost come to me one day and then they come back literally the next day again because I cannot believe uh the one tv (laughs) personality told me that she'd been coming to the area because she's not from the area but she comes here quite often and she's been trying massage therapists around the area and once she said once she found me she's like I'm not going anywhere else she flies in to see me isn't that amazing Um, so yeah wow (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean that's amazing I mean, it's a nice stroke for the ego, but really on like an outside perspective, that speaks to something that speaks to the confidence that you have. So, which mm-hmm. brings me to my next question, because you said, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of times I think when people are looking for a business mentor or coach, they just think they're going to get all of these tactics for like, here's how to get clients and here's how to do bookkeeping and all that stuff. So tell me about confidence and just, you know, what, what, because it seems like that was the biggest um, shift for you during the program that people might not think is an important thing when it comes to running a business. So tell me about that. Just what, what happened there? It seemed like mindset. That is really it. That really is absolutely the key mindset because, um, because of how I was raised, because of how I lived most of my life, um, I always kind of relied on someone else to tell me what to do, my path. And so I never really had that foundation of confidence. And then when I do get a little confidence, I feel arrogant and then I feel guilty. So it was this vicious cycle. Um, oh, <laughs> can anybody relate? So I, like, I feel good <laughs> that I can do this skill, but you also have to have a skill of managing and creating a business. So they're two separate. Um, and I was very hesitant with my business skills because I'd already had, as I said, the design business that didn't do that well. So I had that background of kind of failing. And that would pop up when, like, I would have a slow week or a client didn't return or whatever. But when you kind of help us with the mindset, we take it into our own experiences and say, okay, if someone doesn't come back, well, maybe it's because I'm just not the right person for them and let it brush off instead of trying to work so hard again that one person to come back when really maybe I'm not serving them. I'm not Mm -hmm. the person to serve them. And that kind of shifted the mm-hmm. way I started looking at myself going, it's okay if not everybody loves me. It's okay if I'm not always fully booked. It's okay. Um, mm-hmm. Instead of, there's, I think the confidence, how can I put this? Confidence is believing in yourself. And letting the energy of that permeate. Like, you don't have to talk about it. Um, and I think once I, you start realizing and having self-esteem and not thinking the negative thoughts, that just sort of leaches out into everything that you do, your choices that you make, um, the decisions that you make for your business, for your personal, and that is all about mindset. So you have to kind of dig deep to find out why you think a certain way, why those patterns arise, Mm -hmm. which again is also in keeping in my niche. Mm -hmm. So it's actually been a double learning experience, which has been great. Feel the healer, baby. You know, because you you also also take on so many people's energies. So that can be very, very draining. Um, And so I've had to learn to step back and not be so available to everybody. Um, And that is the hardest thing for me to do is to say no to somebody. Um, and that came from confidence. Mm. That came from knowing that I mm. can't do everything for everybody instead of trying to be a people pleaser. Mm. Which, you know, comes mm-hmm. from the fear of failure, right? And you said that, you said on, on our little pre-interview here is that, you know, you had to dig deep to see why you didn't have that confidence in yourself. And you said, I changed my mindset to realize success is up to me. And even if I failed, I would learn something and move on. And it wasn't a death sentence. And I think that so many people 
coming into this something totally new. You've never yeah. supported yourself. You know, you're a grown woman. And to say like, oh my gosh, I've never supported myself and I don't know how, that is terrifying. You know, that's terrifying. And so I think when people are focused so much on the fear that every little misstep feels like death. It feels like a, a, mm -hmm. a chink in your armor. You know, it feels like a, a hit to your confidence. But to be able to get to that space where mm -hmm. you can handle it is where the real growth happens. And I think that's why you grew so quickly was because that was right. actually what was holding you back. It wasn't the lack of how to get client knowledge. It wasn't the retention yes. strategy. All yeah. those things are important. But, you know, what, you th what do you think would happen if you were just trying to implement, you know, business strategies without shifting the terrain of the confidence it would fail. piece? I, th I think it would fail. Would the strategies have worked? I think yeah. I would have had some luck here and there. Um, but, like, when slow months, and everybody has different areas where they live in the country of when it's slow months. It's slow in the summer here because everybody goes to the shore. Um, so, I, like, I didn't work on Saturdays during the weekend um, in the summer because no one's here. Um, you, hmm. you reinvest your, into yourself and your time and your business. Um, anyway, you, you get the ups and downs, but if I, if I didn't have all that strategy of figuring out what was my biggest fear or what were my biggest fears and what were some of my patterns of behavior because of, resu of a result of that, those fears, um, I needed to stop mm. and take a break. I can be very reactionary, as most people can. I've lived through an anxiety disorder myself. I've always been an anxious person. Mm -hmm. And so I can be very reactionary. Mm -hmm. And I needed to figure out why. And that takes work. It takes uh, putting a mirror in front of your face and saying, it's OK. Mm -hmm. and it's my favorite quote. It's on my website. It's what I teach in yoga. It's what I, I do self-care lessons. Um, for my clients, and I, I teach them this quote. I think it's a Chinese or Tibetan proverb. Every time I see it, uh, it's always somewhere different uh, quoted for, but is tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. And it's about accepting Art, who yeah. you are. We're not perfect. We shouldn't compare ourselves to anybody else. When we do, we create tension. So this is like a double women again, a double meaning for you know physical the manifestation yeah. and then the mental manifestation. We are so tense as a population because we think we should be somebody else. And when you learn, hmm. everybody take a nice deep breath. <laughs> I'm like, I feel yeah, this my is how I talk to people. Come down six feet. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, I need to fly out and see you. <laughs> Thank oh you. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But that totally makes sense. It makes sense. So, so your yeah. bookings are consistent. Yeah, now. They're, then they're they're picking up. Okay, I mean, you no, so any far more only four in you the last half hour. Last Thirty minutes. So only four new bookings in the last half hour. You guys, calm down. All right. Um, you you wanted. I know when we had first talked, you said that success for you when we did your discovery call. You said um, that success for you looked like. Hold on, let me pull it up. I love having these forms. Look. You submitted your form on October 10th, 2018. And I have all your problems <laughs> right here, you know, where we can just see, oh my gosh, you've grown so much. Um, you said um, that you'd like to have a fairly solid book of 15 to mm -hmm. 18 massages a week. You want to be able to be financially independent and pay for your own health insurance policy and like to look into traveling and working while traveling. So are you seeing those? Are you, you're, um, it is beginning, as I said, this, the summer the it slowed down, which I'm going to go ahead and I said, I'll take a break and that's fine because you can, I can't do 15 a week for 52 weeks. So I don't, but that you could yes. choose to take a break instead of freak out because the summer was slow. Yeah. That's badass. And I think that's so cool. now things are yeah. starting to pick up again. And so I'm starting to figure out, I, I don't let people book, um, beyond 60 days with me cause I want to control my future. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and then I try for a while I was working six days. Actually for a while I was working seven days a week. Then I now work six days a week. I always mm -hmm. take Tuesdays off, but now I've dropped it down to five days a week. So I can do maybe about three a day and I still teach yoga. I, and I do awesome. self-care workshops, um, that actually brings in a lot of money. Um, hold on, what was my point? What was the question? <laughs> oh. Just about consistency. Yeah, I mean, so the you said, you know. You wanted to be booked solid yes. and financial. So I do have ups and downs. Yeah. That's going to happen. And, and I've learned to ride that wave. 
Um, I am getting more and more financially independent. Um, I have a pretty decent sized cushion of savings. Uh, I know. I saw. I saw the number, and I was like, "Yeah." yeah. I, mean, I was. I was pretty impressed it, with myself. Like, That's awesome. Um, like, and, yeah, to have saved that much in a year is awesome. And I, and I, some of it's for retirement. Some of it could be for taxes, and some of it could be yeah. just for you know yeah. a vacation. Um, I had yeah. some things set up where I was going to travel more. I was. I got my massage license to practice down in Florida, where I used to live. But the person, my bet, one of my best friends, just moved to Napa. So I may be switching. Yes, yeah, she just oh, moved to Napa. California She's for a winery. I know. Oh, bummer. That sounds so. Horrible. I'm now gonna. <laughs> I actually have, I have a graduate in. Oh, Napa good. I connect you with too, if you need oh, okay, a place good. to practice. Yeah, just post okay. it in the graduate group. Um, so I'm probably going to be going yeah. out to her yeah. several times a year, and then maybe to, hopefully to maybe to work and do workshops and stuff like that there. And then I was going to work for a mm-hmm. company of teaching and massage modality, but I ended up not liking their ethics and um, decided mm-hmm. to back out from that. So I had like these things where I was going to travel and I was getting really excited. I was going to make a little bit more money. And I was like, it wasn't aligning with what is me or life just happened. My yeah. friend moved and I'm now just yeah. figuring out what's the next step. I'm letting some things. Yeah. But I love that you're creating yeah. that. That's possible for you now. I mean, is that possible to even think about when you're like freaking out and your schedule's like bananas and you can't take mm-hmm. any time off anyway? You know, I love it. I'm so proud of you. Oh my goodness. It's so great to just see the confidence in you just just beaming out. And you guys, I want to say, too, it's like Katie and I, you know, I've known Katie mm-hmm. for almost a year now, right? And, and we, we, const- we have a graduate group for the people that have all completed my program. We have a secret Facebook group just for graduates. And, and it's so awesome to just keep seeing these updates, you know, over the last year. And there's so much more. There's so many of these other victories that we didn't, you know, that we didn't even touch on the day. But you know, that's really the bottom line is this amazing triumph to go from, I don't know what to do and I don't know what to do to fix it. And I don't know how to fix it to being totally confident in control of your business, you know, knowing how to get clients like a boss and knowing how to ride the waves of business without feeling like the world is falling apart. And that's a huge victory for our 40. I'm actually turning 49 40. on Sunday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Right. 49 year old woman who's who's never had to sustain herself. You know what I mean? Like that's, I think that that's important. I'm really glad that you said that because I think, you know, like you said, some people Mm -hmm. are kind of like ashamed of that, you know, but I think that's a really important um, piece because it's, first of all, it's never too late. Okay. It's never too late to make massive changes in your life. It's never too late to take control over your life. It's never too late to make changes and really put the power back in your hands so that you can have the options and create the life that Mm -hmm. you want, you know? Thank you. Congratulations. Any final words for our, for our um, friends? Here? For anyone that's considering or thinking about doing something list, like this, do it. Uh, it. It has changed my life completely. It has given me the, the confidence. It's given me the know-how. You guys already know how to massage. You just need to know how to run a business. And start making money for yourself mm-hmm. instead of somebody else. Take the program. Do the program. <laughs> yeah, start filling up. Do the program. Those of you that are interested in applying or do just more information, you can direct message me or just go to rockyourmassagepractice.com and click on the work with me page. You know, and I want to preface this by saying, you know, I don't, I only invite a small percentage of the people that I actually speak to and that my team speaks to. This isn't for everybody. It's not like some, no, it's not like I'm like, oh, hey, Katie, you know, you should, here's the link, go do my program. Like we're very serious about who we invite into the program because we have to believe in you. We have to know that you have what it takes to succeed if you just had the map. And, you know, not everybody is going to succeed in this industry. That's just the nature of it. Not all people have the right commitment level. Not all people have the right motivations. And it's very, very important, just like I teach you guys, to be selective about who you work with so that you're only working with the best people. I only work with the best people. (laughs) And this proves it, right? You know, to have people like Katie that are out there in the world really shining their light and, and providing support for people with anxiety disorders and, and the physical and emotional effects of that. And it's just always an honor and a privilege, you know, when I get to connect with those people out there that are just ready and willing and committed, but just don't know how. 
and you're, you know, you've been so coachable and you've been so committed and, and it's really, you know, you did the work. It's like, I could be your personal trainer, but if you don't mm -hmm. show up to the gym and if you cut corners and you don't lift the weights and you're getting Twinkies 24 seven, then nothing I mm -hmm. tell you is going to make any difference. So kudos to you for actually digging in deep and doing the work and the results are yours. Thank you. And I'm celebrating with you. I think it's really great. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, you guys, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate you so much. And uh, we're, we've got uh, lots of these lined up for you guys. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and found it inspirational. And again, if you have any other questions, either for Katie or for myself or for my team, feel free to just post them in the comments below and, and just tag us and we'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. All right, Katie, enjoy the rest of your day. Do something right. awesome for yourself. Okay. Bye. Okay. We'll see.